Welcome, my name is Jeff New. I'm a product manager on a exciting new product called Cisco Intersight. Uh, we did a little bit of review for Tech Field Day uh, in the fall uh, on the strategy. My colleague who's also in the room, Jeff Foster, uh, went through kind of the larger vision of what Intersight is, what we're trying to do with the platform. We also went into a technical deep dive on kind of the security and elements of this particular product with our architect, Sebastian Rosé. So uh, those, those videos are also out, out there to, uh, to review. Uh, but I want to give you guys an update on where we are with this, uh, this new platform. So before I get in there, I want to give you just an update on what is Intersight, for those of you that might not have seen the previous videos I just referenced. Um, tell you where we are today with the, with the, the product. We had some exciting uh, new uh, capabilities launch uh, in the last couple of weeks, so I want to give you kind of a little bit of an update on that. And then I'll spend most of my time in demonstration mode. I want to give you guys a first-hand look at those new features that were, uh, we just released. So um, let's get into it. So Cisco Intersight, what is it? Um, you, probably the easiest way I can kind of quantify this for, for people really new to this is it's a, oops, it's a platform for UCS and Hyperflex to manage those platforms uh, from a new uh, a cloud portal. Uh, so it's a SaaS offer, UCS and Hyperflex managed as a service. And so what we're trying to do here is this is all new, ground up, microservices architecture. Uh, really trying to simplify and streamline the overall management strategy around Hyperflex and uh, UCS. And I think you'll get a glimpse of that when we get into the actual functionality itself. The other thing we're trying to do is not just repeat uh, the things that we've done in the past. Obviously, we have a number of tools and products in the portfolio, things like UCS Director for Orchestration, UCS Central for multi-domain UCS management, obviously the, the manager, UCS manager, uh, IMC supervisor for multiple standalone rack servers, things like Hyperflex Connect for that uh, deep cluster of management in our hyper-converged offer. This is going to try to bring all that stuff together, but to go beyond that because of the connected nature of this platform. Um, all those devices reporting back into a, a SaaS offer, uh, we're going to be able to offer customers much more uh, in terms of uh, support uh, and uh, guidance around uh, best practices and try to guide them in terms of best tuning their systems and all those kind of things we can build up from that shared intelligence. And then lastly is agile delivery. Uh, delivery. We are delivering this service um, and again, given it that it's a SaaS platform, very different from our traditional software products, we're able to ship um, new features on a weekly basis, you know, very very accelerated basis. We don't have to do these block releases every six or nine months. So as we have new capabilities and features, they'll just roll out on the site and customers will be able to take advantage of that. So a very different model than we've traditionally done um, in the system space. So really a first mover here um, in the system space. We think there's a lot of really cool uh, things we're going to be able to do with this particular platform. The other thing I'll mention is with uh, Intersight, if you heard any buzz over the summer, about Project Starship, that was the technology we developed. We announced Intersight in September. As I said, we launched the uh, first version, or the, the base version, I'll get into that in a second, on December 15th, so just about a month and a half ago. That was the first sort of GA release of this technology. And then it was in the tech preview that moved over, and then we continued to see steady growth in terms of connected devices. So over 56,000 devices are currently reporting into this portal right now. We're just getting started. We're seeing over 300 a week. So uh, in terms of functionality uh, that's in the initial release, um, so I said that in December we have a, a basic version of the product, and, that, and that's available for all Cisco, UCS, and, and Hyperflex customers. No additional licensing needed. They're able to plug in this to this today to get some immediate benefits, and that includes a global dashboard and monitoring across all their traditional UCS, standalone UCS, as well as Hyperflex and Hyperflex Edge systems, all in a single, single place. That's something we haven't really been able to deliver them out of the box before. Um, we'll be able to customize this experience in terms of the, you know, the dashboard, what they want to show, quickly tag assets, search uh, very quickly across those assets to navigate um, within the tool as well as launch into some of our existing products, things like IMC, Cisco, uh, Cisco um, IMC, Hyperflex uh, Connect, as well as UCS Manager. And then you'll see this in the demonstration, but we have this really slick installation flow for Cisco Hyperflex. It really changes the game in terms of deploying Hyperflex at scale. Um, and I think you'll, you'll see that in the demonstration. And then last week, uh, we introduced the first premium tier, which is uh, Cisco Intersight Essentials. And in the first release, this is really focused on our standalone C-series rack servers. So if you wanted to manage multiple C-series rack servers today, we have a product called IMC Supervisor. This is meant to basically provide similar capabilities there. So policy-based configuration of those UCS servers, firmware upgrades, um, detailed views of all the systems, you'll see that in the demonstration. We've also built a full API um, on top of the platform, so RESTful API, 
Uh, I'll show you, hopefully have time for a little bit of a glimpse into that API itself. So from the ground up, API first, everything that you're gonna see today is built on top of that common API. And again, much more coming soon here, right? So we're gonna be iterating, shipping new features, that CI, CD, continuous integration, continuous delivery model for this platform means we're gonna always be able to innovate and ship new features. Any questions on kind of what it is before I get into demonstration mode? Yes. yes. Uh, how does this work? You say it's a software as a service offering. So I suppose that your system runs in your cloud or whatever, and the devices report to that. So do you have an appliance on site which gathers the information and pushes it, or do you need to configure the, uh, the hardware in a special way? So the way that we've uh, designed this product initially is there's a, a small piece of software called a device connector that sits in each endpoint. So that could be a, a pair of uh, UCS fabric interconnects. It could be a, in the BMC of uh, the Cisco rack server. Um, same with uh, um, Hyperflex. Uh, uh, uh. So it's not, at, it's not at the US level, it's at the hardware kind of level or at the firmware level. Well, and the, and the one difference there is the Hyperflex piece. There's also, in addition to having it in the infrastructure, yeah. there's also the software component and we have an, a connector that's actually in the software level there as well. So what you have to do is get to a minimum version of the UCS firmware. There's 3.2 for UCS manager, mm -hmm. 3.1 for uh, IMC for standalone systems and Hyperflex 2.5 and newer all of which were released over the summer, and then you're good to go. And is that supporting all of the currently supported UCS B-series and C-series devices, or is it you require to have a certain level? So if you're connected to Fabric Interconnect, yes, all of those Hyperflex, B-series, C-series, S-series, all that stuff comes into the platform. Um, currently with our uh, standalone rack servers, if you don't have a Fabric Interconnects, we only support M5, our current fifth generation. M4 support is coming soon. Okay. Uh, and as a question, sorry, I'm going to be bugging you with that. A uh, lot of questions. Uh, how does this play with uh, uh, current VC customers, B blocks, and so on? Does this play in the game, or are, are you excluding that for now? So la large, la large customer estates with uh, V blocks, with a lot of UCS B series devices. So we're currently in. We'll talk into the the VC team um, on how we're going to potentially integrate the platform into what their management is. We're always talking to them about the tools and, and things that we have in play. Right now, uh, we don't specifically support the versions of software required for VCE, but that doesn't mean it won't be supported in the near future. Um, I have one. Um, how are customers reacting to the um, security aspects of this? Because. Um, Good question. Uh, that's typically the first question we get from customers is, uh, what about security? So we have, um, Cisco obviously being a security company, we have a, a, a very well-defined set of standards for operating these type of services. We have things like Meraki that have been in the market for some time. Um, we've been working with those teams. We had to get a, uh, basically a certificate to operate from Cisco InfoSec in order to publish um, and, and release even the tech preview version of this. Um, customers obviously want to see that information, they want to see the design, they want to see how their data is being stored. We have white papers on the topic for this particular product to help show the standards that we adhere to and things like that. So. Is it like direct connect into AWS? So I will say that, um, so Intersight, <laughs> currently the way it's implemented, uh, so we have this uh, a portal that's up and running. It's designed to run in any of the public clouds, be it AWS, uh, Azure, or uh, Google, Google Cloud, Cloud Platform, or your own infrastructure. So this will eventually make its way into an on-prem appliance for certain customers. Again, the, the plan is to bring, package all this stuff and give customers the option of how they want to run it. Um, so today, it basically, is, as you talked about, you have the on-prem instance, and then we have our services that are running in the cloud. Um, uh, how do you secure the channel? Is it like a SSL tunnels or? Yeah. So basically there's a, um, that small piece of software, uh, it tries to call home. Uh, there's, in order to claim your device into your Intersight account, uh, you actually have to uh, uh, log into the box locally, get your, um, there's a, a rolling security code there. You have to enter that in the portal so that you can claim the device. So there's a few other ways we're working to, on to streamline that from factory for new orders, but yes. So in, in terms of, uh, uh, just to rehash what, what was just said here in terms of the question. Um, so yeah, if we do support proxy and the device connector, um, there's a few different options that we'll offer support for and that's, that's covered in the configuration guide. I did wanna um, give you a little bit of a, a demonstration of, of Intersight. So this portal's up and live right now. So if you go to intersight.com and you have one of those devices with the software that I talked about earlier, you're gonna be able to connect it up and start getting some value out as a UCS or Hyperflex customer today. Um, so you don't have to get any licensing, there's nothing else to purchase. You can go ahead and, and plug it in. Um, 
So just to kind of give you a sense, obviously dashboard, health status, all your faults for your different systems come into a centralized location. Again, different types of platforms all coming together. Um, quickly see kind of what you have. These can be customized. You can move things around very easily. You can create multiple dashboards, um, all, that, all that kind of good stuff. Click down to get you know, details on what, what systems are critical and need attention um, and operate on them immediately. I said, all can I ask you one thing, please? Um, just come to my mind right now. This tool is intended mainly for uh, Cisco devices, so Hyperflex, UCSB, UCSC. Is there any appetite or any ambition from Cisco to make this a kind of overarching management tool for, let's say, even non-Cisco devices, like management interface for the enterprise? Um, so I, I wouldn't say that it's limited in scope uh, necessarily to just the systems that we talked about. We obviously have UCS Director today that supports uh, different compute platforms as well as networking, storage, and virtualization. Uh, so the longer term ambition for this is to kind of bring in all those types of capabilities into this platform. But at the moment, we're really focused, laser focused on getting our platforms in order on the compute side um, and making that experience simpler uh, across those. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't rule it out, but again, it's not necessarily in the short term roadmap. Yeah. So um, beyond just the, the kind of bringing everything together from a monitoring and managing perspective, you're going to get this really great search capability. You can uh, quickly find information about my, the systems and, and navigate to get more details, search across tags and different IDs. Um, additional help and capabilities are in here. Uh, you're going to be able to find details on my uh, so different compute systems, uh, firmware levels, health status, uh, be able to launch off into different management tools uh, directly from this as well. Um, View into your multi, uh, view into your Hyperflex clusters. So if I got multiple Hyperflex clusters, hundreds of clusters across multiple locations, I can quickly see the health status across those different elements. Uh, my fabric interconnects as well, port utilization details, um, all that will be available. So let me uh, jump a little bit into some of the the C series specifically. So if I have a, a C series uh, system that I'm looking for. And just to kind of show you what it looks like in context, right? You're going to be able to get views into your uh, graphical views, details of your health status. It'll overlay uh, any critical issues on the screen. Be able to tell you if, where you have your issues. Um, details about the inventory, um, things like your CPUs, firmware, uh, adapters, controllers, storage configuration, all that kind of good stuff is in here. But what I really want to show you is some details about the policy management for our standalone C-Series. So this is a, a, a platform that we will extend uh, to support uh, our traditional fabric attached systems as well. Um, but I want to give you guys a little bit of a glimpse into what it takes to kind of deploy a new C-Series server. So this is creating a, a server profile. So for this particular demo, I'm going to create a profile. And the great thing about this is um, I can predefine all the policy that I need ahead of time, right? So I've, I've actually defined some policy for my BIOS settings. I can do other things for um, some uh, local user access and uh, I can do select policy for simple things like NTP, my storage configuration, my network configuration, um, as well as other elements. So the whole idea here is I can, I can either build things in line uh, or I can select them as needed. So like, for example, let's, let's look at user policy. I can pick one that I have already or I can go ahead and create a new one. So if I wanted to go ahead and create a new user policy, I can quickly give it a name, specify what options I want to have here in terms of the password expiration. If I want to add any additional users to the policy, I can do it in line. Just a quick question to that. Um, is there a minimum software required on the UCS side? Yes. So as, as we covered before, the on the UCS manager, so the IM, the, in the Fabric Interconnects, you gotta have version 3.2 or newer. So if you're using standalone systems, which is what we're demoing here, standalone rack servers, you gotta be on 3.1 or newer, and that's currently M5 only, but we'll have support for some of the M4 systems coming shortly. Um, and same with the Hyperflex side of this. So the Hyperflex, any systems attached to Fabric Interconnects is the 3.2. For standalone, for Edge uh, specifically, it'll be the M5 Edge, um, any M5 Edge will work with this. How would it look like on your side if the version is too old? Will you get an alarm or will it just not work? Or? If the version of the software is too old on the device connector, we, uh, you can upgrade to the latest firmware, but you have to do that before you can connect it to the Intersight platform. 
So here um, I have uh, a server. I can quickly choose that uh, server that I want to actually deploy the, the profile out to. This will do all the checking on the front end, make sure everything's formatted correctly where it needs to be, and I can go ahead and save and deploy. And I'll just make a mention here, I'm running this on public internet. This is the, the conference Wi-Fi accessing the site. The systems are in a lab and a couple different sites we have in the US. Um, and all this stuff um, is running pretty snappy. So you can see we're validating here. If you want to see the status of this, I can quickly see that the, the profile is deploying. And again, this is all the configuration for the server. I can click in to get the details of that progress. The other thing I can do really easily is, I'm not just doing this on one server. I say I want to do this on a bunch of servers. Um, in this case, I'll show you a quick demo for, for three. I can clone this very easily. So if I want to create basically the same personality on that server, but across multiple servers, I basically take my demo um, and I'm going to go ahead and, and iterate on that. I'm going to create three copies. I can act optionally add description and tags. And then I can pick the servers that I want to actually push this out to. So I'll pick three servers that are running, but they're not actually assigned a profile yet. I can change the, how those go. And then I can go ahead and issue that. So we can see here that we've successfully cloned it. We're currently validating. And we can see those come online as they go and push out. So all this stuff gets updated um, as it gets pushed out. Now, the other cool thing about this is I'm not updating these profiles um, in mass if I need to make a change. If I had to add another user to the system or I wanted to make a change to my storage configuration or network configuration, I'm going to edit the policy, right? So I make a change to the policy. All these profiles reference the same policy. So I can go back to basically here, see my user policy that I created, and I could simply edit that policy to add additional users, make changes, and then I can push that, those changes right back down into the system. So again, managing at scale, deploying at scale, Starting with standalone, we'll be moving into the other uh, types of systems as well very soon. So that's what I wanted to show you about C-Series. Um, just a quick kind of glimpse into what's there. That, that's part of Intersight Essentials. Just went live last week, so, but it's up on the site now. There's a 90-day trial. You can try it out for yourself if you've got some M5 C-Series systems. So you can plug them in and deploy them. And the cool thing is these could be deployed across multiple sites, right, globally, anywhere in the world. The whole idea here is we're really trying to streamline the process of supporting sites uh, in, in types of uh, robo type of deployments, other types of deployments where customers have hundreds or thousands of sites and, and systems spread across those sites. This is an ideal solution for that type of environment. All right, any questions on the C-Series piece? I'm gonna jump over to Hyperflux. Um. A generic question. You said that this is software as a service solution, uh, which allows you to compare data you collect from different customers to see whether weird things are happening out there in the field. Uh, do I, as a customer, get any benefits out of that? So initially, um, there's one feature in particular that will be um, enabled pretty quickly here. Uh, I didn't mention it in the slides uh, earlier, but there's a just by hooking up your devices to the uh, the no cost edition base. Um, you'll get a streamlined tech support experience. So obviously tech support will get notified of different events, things that are happening on the system. Um, they have a large history of case data and things like that. Um, and so even basic manual things that customers do today to, to collect logs and give them back to tax um, will be streamlined by the system. So no longer does the customer have to go gather something and then upload something to a site. They call TAC or TAC calls them. and says, we noticed you have a problem. Can I go ahead and grab the logs and start triaging the system? and TAC can control that process and do all that stuff with permission from the customer in an automated way. So the customer just basically doesn't have to do much. We can address the problem for them. But this is just the beginning, really. I mean, there's a lot of baselining how components are performing, um, streamlining the process of, of uh, RMAs and getting replacement parts. All this stuff is going to be greatly enhanced by having the, the shared knowledge of over 60,000 UCS and Hyperflux customers plugged into a single platform. So there's a lot of things we're working on that will be available in the, in the coming months and years. So the short answer is there's, we're working on it. So maybe to build on that question, uh, there are some storage companies which have built, let's say, they're gathering a lot of telemetry data mm -hmm. and they're using some kind of machine learning and huge data lakes to kind of predict uh, issues and try to fix them proactively or um, s somehow help in the remediation process. Yeah. Is that something that you are planning to do as well Absolutely. as you gather more and more data? Yeah. So I mean, we're... We think we're, we're kind of a first mover in the system space, but the storage vendors have been doing some of this stuff for a little while. Mm -hmm. We see the same model working very well in, for systems. So yes, that's absolutely what we're looking to do. 
Okay, so you're looking to do, you're not doing it currently, right now? We're collecting a lot of data um, in terms of actionable feedback for the customer. Mm -hmm. That's still stuff that we're working on. Okay. Um, regarding, uh, you say you have 65,000 devices, more or less, which are reporting right now. So do you have uh, some large enterprise customers which are already hooked into that? model reporting data or is that more like disparate at this point with this type of platform again given that we're on the bleeding edge in the system space we have a number of customers that are testing the waters of this okay. um, but haven't necessarily fully deployed especially in the more okay. traditional environments they tend to mm -hmm. take a little more of a wait and see try it out approach we but in terms of vision and feedback mm -hmm. everything that we've heard has been absolutely this we love it this is what we think that this really differentiates cisco mm -hmm. um, and so they're eager to see this mature and move along and, try and work with us on this we've got a number of requests for um, for development and, and effort on this as well so on the other hand um, you're doing this all on your own as cisco um, not all environments will only have cisco um, will we be working together with other parties to get all the data in so you can show a complete picture of, an, of a data center? Or? So the answer is yes. We've had a number of uh, storage vendors already approach us. We're working with them to build connectors and other technology into their platform so that we can offer better. Obviously, Cisco has a big converged uh, business. We work with a lot of partners. We want to make that better for our customers. So that's, that's part and parcel of delivering that type of solution. So yes, we're working on that as well. Um, I want to quickly get through an Intersight uh, um, installer uh, demo. Um, I, had a, I had one slide uh, to kind of show you um, kind of what this means from a, from a customer perspective. Um, so this is today they have an on-premise installer, um, an OVA file. They have to basically spin up to do the installation. Well, the beauty of Intersight is you got a rack power network your devices and then you can control that centrally through the Intersight portal. Uh, so no need for on-premise infrastructure. The latest version of software is already, already there, always there. Um, and you can really rapidly deploy these uh, profiles across multiple sites uh, very quickly. Uh, so again, think of it, this really changes the game in terms of the, uh, the model, in terms of the, eliminating that expensive staging option. Uh, no longer do you have to get your, your systems ready to go and then ship them to the end site. You can directly ship from the factory to the end site and do all your configuration via the other site. So let me give you a quick view of what that looks like. The, uh, this uses the same profile technology we showed you in the C-Series management. And uh, from here, we're able to basically create what we call a Hyperflex cluster profile. Uh, so similar type of flow and reuse of policy. I'm able to give it a name. And this is my cluster name in Hyperflex, if you're familiar. That's how I'll reference it. I can give it an optional description for e easier searchability and, and readability. And then I can add those tags as well. This will let me do things like search for locations, uh, do better reporting later on uh, as well. Once I do that, I can quickly define the different security, uh, hypervisor, and controller VM configurations that are needed. Uh, and the great thing here is, again, I can save this as a policy right, and reuse it later. So I can give it a user identifiable name. And then I can use this for other profiles that I create later on. Same thing for our, some of the basic networking configuration information, time zone, DNS, NTP. I can save that and use that as a reusable policy. And then some of these other policies I've already created as a, uh, uh, something that's been pre-configured. So for vCenter settings, I already got that. A couple options for auto support. And then we can go ahead and select the policy for uh, network configuration. So I got that, my VLANs for my network and my storage. And then I can go to the next. And now I just pick the nodes. So these have already been claimed, so into the, into the portal. And then I can basically put them and assign them with, with the profile. Basically check my IPs. This is consistent with the policy I defined earlier. Look at all my settings. So we do three levels of validation here. Uh, we do field checking to make sure everything's formatted correctly. We check to make sure we have connectivity to things like vCenter, all that kind of stuff. And, and then basically we can go ahead and issue the deployment. Now this takes about 45 minutes to an hour. I've sped it up in the video here so you can kind of get a sense of what the experience is like. Um, but what this will do is it'll tell you what's going on. I don't have to sit here and watch like with the OVA installer on-prem, I can go ahead and do a dozen more of these or you know, 100 of these in parallel if I want to roll out a lot of clusters on a site. Um, that's, that's really the beauty of this. Or I can take a look and see how things are progressing, get all the details as I'm deploying the operating system, as I'm configuring the Hyperflux data platform, as I'm registering this to vCenter. All these things come together um, through a, a very streamlined installation process. So once, once all that is complete, the last step of this is really to register or claim that Hyperflex software instance back to Intersight. So you get that multi-cluster view. You get views of your alarms. 
uh, your uh, current storage utilization across your clusters, how many VMs are currently deployed within those particular clusters, any infrastructure uh, alarms as well. <coughs> and then when this is complete, um, as I said, I can close this out and we can review the, the details of that uh, there. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you uh, that I didn't get to show you in the earlier demo was the cross-launch capability. So I mentioned that the uh, um, this can launch into things like IMC, UCS Manager. One of the things we do launch into is Hyperflex Connect. So I can go into my cluster, I can launch Hyperflex, and that's the local element manager for Hyperflex. This uses the device connector as a, as a tunnel, so I don't need to have direct management network access. I can use Intersight as a portal for that. But you're going to get the same experience of HX Connect. Very responsive. You can get all the details, all the performance and details in here as well. And that's the demo for uh, the Hyperflex uh, installer. So with that, uh, I know I'm over time, but I wanted to say thank you. And uh, if you want more information, some of the security questions and details, um, go to cisco.com slash go intersight. And then also the intersight portal itself has a help portal. Uh, if you go to intersight.com slash help, that'll tell you all the things you need to know in terms of versions of software, how to get on board, and get started with Intersight. Thank you.